Hello. All right. Yeah, it's it's a pleasure to be here. I'm I'm glad we finally made it. Also, and um, yeah. Today I'm gonna talk about our games, mainly about our uh, most recent one, which is Old Man's Journey. But um, before I start out, hello. Uh, I just wanted to get a feel for the audience that is here today. So how many people here are making or want to make uh, computer games? All right. And uh, how many people are uh, from the animation field? Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to start talking about my studio for a little bit, which is called Broken Rules. Um, as Pavel said, we're based in Vienna. We have been around since 2009. And uh, I'm basically, my role is the visual lead. So I do everything from doing the artwork for our games to making our websites, making trailers, and anything that is kind of like visually related is where I, where I come in, basically. Um, originally, the studio was founded... Oh, does this work? Oh, there we go. It's a little bit slow. Right, this is us. We're five people when we were still young. <laughs> a few years back, and um, originally the studio was founded by, can we see this? I think the clicker somehow doesn't work. Oh, there we go, it's just slow. So these three guys, that is Felix, Jan and Peter, and they were fresh out of uh, university um, studying uh, informatics. And in 2009 they founded their studio with a game called And Yet It Moves. And, and Yet It Moves basically is a, a 2D puzzle platformer where you can rotate the world and the gravity changes as you rotate the world. And so there are like all these different puzzles built around this idea. And when they started working on it, they actually didn't have an artist on the team. So they were all three programmers and they had to come up with a way to, to make the visuals for the game. And I think they found a really unique and creative solution because what they did essentially was take photo textures and uh, combine them with those ripped paper edges to make this sort of um, papery looking world. And while it might not be like the most refined art style, I think it's still a very uh, creative solution. And this is a little bit what, we're, what I'm going to talk about today. Um, how we come up with art styles for our games and what that process looks like. Um, so in 2010, 2010 uh, Martin and I joined the team as two co-founders. And as a team of five, we started to work on our next big project. There were two games and the first one was called Chasing Aurora. And that was the first game that I did the artwork for. Um, it was essentially a local multiplayer game. Does everybody know what a local multiplayer game is? Raise your hands if you know it. Oh, okay, a few. So basically a local multiplayer game is where people sit together on the couch and they play a game together. Um, sort of like if you know Mario Kart, for example, is a classical local multiplayer game. And this is what Chasing Aurora is about. So you play as these birds and you fly around in this um, world inspired by, by the mountain range Alps. And basically it's a bunch of kind of like children's games actually. So you have these games like Hide and Seek and um, uh, Freeze Tag and uh, that's how you play. And this game launched in 2011 on uh, the Nintendo console Wii U. Does anybody remember that? Yeah? Okay. So that was a launch title. That means um, on the day the game, the console came out, the game was available in, in their store. And this is also one of the things that I should probably add. All of our games are only available digitally. So you can buy them only on digital stores like um, iTunes or Steam or the eShop for Nintendo. So you can't actually go in a store and buy a physical copy. Um, so 
after that was released, um, we made the second part to that game. And it was called uh, Secrets of Raticon. And it took place in the same universe. It had the same art style. And you also played as this bird, human-like being. Uh, but instead of playing together, it was a single-player game. And in this game, you sort of explore this world and all its inhabitants. And um, you try to uncover the secrets of this world. So here's a little bit of gameplay. All right. So, um, as I said, both of the, these games were inspired by the Alps, specifically images like this. It was kind of the, the harsh nature of the Alps that inspired us to create a game like this. And these were also like the pictures that we started out with. Because when we started out, the game didn't look like this. It actually looked like this. So, not very pretty but functional, because that's how we usually start working our, on our games, making a prototype. So what you see here is basically these little boxes up here represent those birds flying around, and those, those lines, the purple lines, are sort of like wind streams where those birds kind of like glide along, and as soon as you get into this wind stream, the birds would kind of like speed up and swoosh around. So it was very much when we started working up um, on this, it was very much about the idea of, of sort of like this dream of flight. How could we make this feel as good as possible? And when we had that, um, we started thinking about how how could we make this look good? You know, how could we find a visual style? that would support these ideas. And I tried a lot of different things. I played around with different ideas, tried different approaches, and I kind of like, I couldn't really come up with something where I and the rest of the team said, this is it, this is what we should do. And it took actually quite a while, a lot of experimentation, a lot of iteration, and at some point I just got really frustrated, and I kind of like took a break from the project. And through a happy accident at home, or I don't know how happy it actually was, because uh, I had this old wardrobe at home, and one day it kind of like fell apart. It just, everything came crashing down. But I found out that inside the wardrobe there were these really nice wooden shelves, and I started drawing on these shelves, um, the, or these wooden boards, actually. And I, I drew this image, and this is actually fairly large. It's about like this size something like this. And I really just started out um, cross-hatching stuff. So all these lines that you kind of like see here. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like, kind of like, I needed to sort of just get into this flow of just drawing whatever. And um, at some point, I got kind of like got exhausted of just doing cross-hatches. So I started leaving out these triangles because I was lazy, more or less. And I started just like filling other stuff with black and sort of like this, this landscape started kind of like appearing. And only at the very end I actually added those birds in there. But um, I drew it and I really liked it. I thought it had a really nice feel to it. And I showed it to the other guys in the team. And they were kind of like, yeah, we like that. This is, this, you're onto something here. Like keep on doing that. So I started to cut up all the other wooden shelves in different pieces and started drawing on them. Because one of the challenges that I struggled with, with was um, if we're inspired by these, these mountains and by nature, it's like, what do you have there? There's like, yeah, mountains, clouds, water, grass, trees, rocks. What else is there, really? And then I figured out, well, there are animals, right? So I started drawing these. And this is one of the other boards. It's actually fair, much smaller. It's just this size. And again, I showed it to the rest of the team, and they were like, okay, yeah, this, this is what we want to pursue. We want to find something that works as a game with this sort of art style. And after I did that, we were really happy with that, but then we had to figure out a way how to translate this into a game. And um, games have a lot of te technical limitations. You can't just kind of like take that, animate it, and it just works. You have to solve all these 
kind of like challenges and um, things. So um, what I did next basically was um, make digital mockups where I tried to solve these problems and came up with these images. And these were already kind of like very close to the, to the final thing in a way. But you can see some of the things kind of like fell out. For example, um, these cross hatches that I that we that was like one of the main ideas that we liked about the concept art were these cross hatches. And then when we tried them in the game, we figured we found out that they just don't work. Because in the game you actually have like a you have a camera that looks into the world, right? And the camera moves around with the player and it zooms in and zooms out. And what happens to cross hatches is they just kind of like blur out and make make a new color between the colors where you you know, crosshatch on. So we had to drop that. And that was, for example, one of the things that kind of like transformed into the, in, in, uh, during that process. So um, we wrapped up Chasing Aurora and Secrets of Raticon. Um, both of them didn't do very well financially and also not critically. And we were sort of like at the verge of closing down the studio. That was in 2014. Um, but we decided to keep on trucking and um, pick up some, co some contract work and try to keep afloat and see if we could, you know, at some point make a new game. And in 2015, that opportunity happened. And Felix and I started working on this game, Old Man's Journey. And uh, for this game, I was the creative director on it, s and as well as the art director, and Felix was doing the game design and uh, programming and business development and, and other things. And uh, we decided to assemble a team of freelancers and other people that we were just interested in collaborating with and that could work well with this team. And um, we actually worked with an animation studio called Salon Alpine on this game. And uh, that was a very fruitful collaboration because um, for the art director of that animation studio, they always wanted to break into the games industry in a way. They didn't have any experience with games and um, they're sort of like technical imitations. And on the other hand, he was a really, really good art director. And um, for me, it was a good opportunity just to learn from him. So I'm going to introduce Old Man's Journey really quick for those who don't know it. Does anybody know it here? Old Man's Journey? Has anybody heard of it? All right, nice. Anyway, um, Old Man's Journey essentially is a game about this old man living alone um, on a cliff in a house. And one day he receives a letter. And upon reading that letter, he just kind of like grabs his things and starts to walk. And the players don't know why. And as he travels, there, um, he always needs to kind of like sit down, take a break, and rest a little bit. And as, he, and as he rests, he thinks back on his life. And the key moments that sort of like brought him to this house. And uh, the whole game sort of presents itself in that manner. So there's no text, there's no language in the game. Um, everything is communicated through the gameplay and through these images. For example, here when he um, went on a road trip with his wife. Uh, the gameplay itself works in a way that um, the old man, um, or the player actually is able to shape the landscape. And wherever two hills create an intersection, the old man can jump from one hill to the other. And sort of the magic trick with that is it doesn't matter like how far that hill is away, as long as they intersect, he can just switch over. Um, so here is a screenshot of the game in its final state, basically. It's the first level where people or players learn that the old man can switch from hill to hill. But when we started working on this game, we again only had a prototype. And that prototype looked like this. So pretty much all we had was the hills and the intersections and the idea of how the puzzles would work and a purple or a pink player figure and a blue goal as a target. And 
we didn't really know anything else about like what the game would look like and how we would solve certain problems. Like for example, in the final game we didn't want the old man to have this, you know, to or the players to walk towards this sort of flag thing. We wanted to have something inside the world. This flag was kind of like it was just too gamey and we wanted to have something a little bit more inside the world. Because the whole game is a very slow paced um, uh, experience type of game. It's only like 90 minutes lo long, so about like one to two hours. And uh, you solve these puzzles that are built around this idea of shaping those hills. So my first approach for the art style, coming from a lot of sort of like vector graphic, looked like this. And that was, that was okay, but it was mostly informed about issues like readability and being able to navigate this terrain. But it really lacked sort of like that emotional component that we wanted because the game is very much about emotional issues. It's about the old man traveling, reflecting on his life and um, sort of, you know, sorting out his past with his family. And um, we didn't really specifically know how to proceed, but one of the ideas was to make it more, sort of like have this a more painterly look in a way. So um, I turned to another prototype level, which is where uh, these things are introduced, and these are waterfalls. So when the old man goes to a waterfall, he actually can walk into the waterfall, and then he's like falling down. It acts more or less like a con downward conveyor belt. So it goes in there, walks over there, solves the puzzles, and that's it. And I took that screenshot and uh, painted on top of that, uh, trying to figure out how that actually might look in the end. And I came up with this. And it was, yeah, it was, it was more painterly, I guess, but we all found the results not particularly convincing. It was okay, but just not as good as we wanted it to be. And... Um, I didn't really know how to pursue because I was going to be the main artist on the team, so I had to find a style that I would be comfortable with, that I could pull off for the whole game. So I tried something completely different. I decided, well, what would happen if I just rendered this in 3D? What could that look like? So I opened up a Blender and I started modeling a little bit, and this was the result. And we actually kind of liked it. We liked the colors, we liked the the idea that like placing a light in a scene would give you like immediate shadows and you could m make you know have something like a mood like an atmospheric mood really quickly um so we kind of like tried to pursue the idea and try something different in a way that one of the things here is for example that you see like the camera is very close to the scene or actually to the player figure so he's always very large but we had been thinking about like these like long distances in you know um, where the player would actually get really small and we were trying to figure out how we would handle like different sizes because when when the player is like really far away he's not only really small but he also moves like really 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 slow right and so we needed to find some sort of middle ground for that. So we decided to go back to this scene and uh, do the same thing, model something on top of it. Because here we had the idea that, this, that the goal is actually pretty far in the distance. So again, I modeled this in Blender and came up with this. And again, we were actually kind of positively surprised by the outcome. Uh, because again, we really liked the vibrant colors and uh, the atmosphere that we could set up really easily. But there were various problems. Um, one of them was that I'm just not a very good 3D modeler and I'm really slow. So um, it just lacked the richness that we wanted to have in the world. We wanted to have lots of different details and lots of like small things to interact with. And um, that was just not in here. And Oh, yeah, before I forget it, one thing that I tried to solve was the signposting, as we call it. So um, instead of having this blue flag that tells the player where they need to go, I placed this hillside village there because it's like the only really prominent thing in the scene. So 
it's the only way, way where you really can go, which kind of like leads players to just try it and see if they could go there. And if something happened, then, um, then basically that would work. So with this, I kind of like, I again didn't really know how to like get to the final stage of that art style where I wanted to be. And sort of after a little bit of a break and um, getting inspiration from somewhere completely different, from a music video actually, I decided to go back to my own sort of like drawing roots, which is actually line drawing. And I took the same scene and I just drew lines on it. And um, that, was in that, that was a good technique for me to just put like a lot of details in that same scene. Like, right, in comparison to the other one, there are like all these different things in here. And I actually even went a little bit overboard with all the things that there are, but that was sort of like the intent. And the next step was that I wanted to combine this line drawing with the things that I liked from the 3D render, which is the, the colors and the, the atmosphere. So basically I picked out the colors from the render and put them in here. And that was the, that was the scene. And yeah, we did really like the sort of like the amount of details and the colors and we liked that you could already kind of like imagine this world to be alive, right? So um, for example, with these people like kind of like picking those, those grape vines, you know, they could like run up and down, pick those vines and then go to the, to the little truck, put them on there or kind of like the sheep back there, just like kind of like running around. And you would already have this, this, this alive world that we wanted to create. But we kind of disliked that everything had outlines. We felt it made things look a little bit too cartoonish in a way. And um, we again had to try something different. So we put this idea sort of aside and um, tried to approach the problem from a different angle again. And uh, the next thing was sort of like, um, well, if this little village on the, on the hillside is where the players needed to go in this level, then the logical next step would be that the next level was inside that village, right? And so we tried to figure that out. And again, I went back to the prototype, and here's another level. And in this level, the players learn that they can't shape the hill that the players, or that the old man is standing on, right? So to solve this level, they actually have to move over here on, onto these blocks, which are solid and can't be shaped. And as soon as he's off that hill, he can, they can pull it up and walk up and solve the puzzle. And we also had to, we had to sort of like figure out a visual representation for these solid gray blocks. They had to be something like tangible and understandable that you can't shape them. So with the idea of, of the village, I figured, well, maybe I can just, you know, make these gray blocks to houses. And I sketched on, to on top of that. And that was the result. And so we had to change the level a little bit to go to conform those visual ideas. Um, but it was kind of like it, it already hinted at something that we were on the right path. And um, to again solve the problem here of signposting and letting players know where they needed to go, I decided to extend that sketch vertically. So the player would enter the screen on the bottom and basically the only way where they could go was upwards. And at the very top, there's this building, there's this hotel, and players can't go anywhere else, and a hotel sort of like signals that, okay, it's time to take a break, and he's just gonna sit down there. So um, we really liked that idea, and uh, decided to keep on working with that. And next step was to put down some colors. And I took sort of like the ideas that we learned from those 3D renderings of the kind of like types of colors that we liked, and I applied like a specific uh, color palette to this thumbnail. And at this point, we already kind of like felt that we were onto something, that we're sort of like on the right path, or uh, even though this is still like super crude and simple, right? 
So um, my next step was to kind of like put some details on that, put some textures on that, and kind of like develop that image a little bit further. And I came up with this as the final piece. And um, this was pretty much it. This was sort of like the concept arts that we used to communicate the, the style of the game from then on out. Let's go over here. Excuse me really quick. So um, one of the ideas that still remained was um, if we wanted to do the game in 2D or in 3D because we had been modeling things and the idea of doing 3D things kind of had um, was interesting to us because when the camera moves, o moves over, the s over the scene you would get these sort of like um, perspective parallax scrolling type things where, where you know the perspective shifts a little bit and you actually can see that the buildings are uh, half perspective and we decided to pursue that idea again and um, try to come up with like a 3D version of the same thing. So I took those three houses as a sample and I modeled them in Blender. And this was the result. And then we kind of like um, put together a small scene, put them in the game, and it looked like this. And we actually quite liked the results, especially in comparison to the 2D version, which just looks like this, which is just like a little bit more bland. And at this point, we actually leaned towards making all the assets in the game in 3D. But I just, you know, what I didn't like so much about the 3D version that everything is very geometrical, so you have very straight and clear lines. And um, I also felt that the 3D version just had a, like a little bit more detail, and I felt like I should m have to give the 2D version, you know, uh, a better chance and, and add some details on top of that. So I went back to this 2D version and added more details and came up with this. And this is pretty much how it looks in the game right now with a few changes here and there. Um, but in the end, we decided to go with the 2D version. We made sort of like a list of pros and cons going one way or the other way. And it ended up being a tie, essentially, for which way we should go. And so it, it we. In, in the end, it was mostly like a gut feeling decision um, that we should pursue the 2D version. But when looking at the game in the scene, it actually still is sort of 3D in a way. Everything is kind of flat and stacked on top of each other, but all the layers you can see, they are going like into the distance actually. But it doesn't really look that way. So it's it's definitely still a mixture because we have a few 3D elements in there, here and there. Here's another scene, what that looks like. So you can see it's sort of like this, almost like a, a diorama shoebox type of thing uh, where everything is flat. But uh, the idea that everything is flat was actually one of the, is one of the core rules of the art style itself because um, with everything being sort of like drawn onto the texture, you can't really have any dynamic lighting, right? So if you had like some sort of like spotlight or a sunlight in there and you'd move it around, the, the lights on the hills wouldn't adapt accordingly because they were painted into the texture. So one of the rules of the art style was that everything is flat and everything is stacked on top of each other and everything is lit from above. So basically everything you know, on, on the top is lighter, like you can see on this hill right here, and as it goes downwards, it gets darker, and there's always um, some sort of like color shift uh, in, 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 in this gradient, so to speak. Um, but the best way to kind of like show those rules of the art style is, is with a single asset. This thing, for example, which is a bush, right? But it's just like the silhouette of a bush. And um, applying those rules here, we have one like uh, layer that, that lights it up on the top and one layer that makes it a little bit darker on the bottom. 
And then you add, add another layer and you do the same thing. Light on the top, dark on the bottom. And then one more and you have a finished push. There you go. And this is basically the, the common denominator in a way for all the, for all the art that was produced for the game. So um, when looking at how we put together a whole level with that, um, I'm going to show a little bit of, of the process, which um, basically looked like this in the beginning. We had um, all the puzzles uh, stitched together, which just took separate screenshots, because the way the game works is that you always get one scene. You get one view, and you solve the puzzle in that view, and then the camera moves to the next view, and then you solve the puzzle there, and then it moves on. And these are these screenshots, how that is stitched together. And um, the next step was to sketch on top of that, sort of like taking various reference pictures, as keeping sort of like the theme of the level in mind, and uh, putting all the, the line work on top of that. There we go. So this is a little bit more cleaned up. This is without the camera views. And after that, uh, the basic colors are put down because one of the issues is that the game needs to stay readable. So when the players see a screen, they need to know which elements they can interact with and which elements are just there for decoration. And since it's a very kind of like lush world and there are like all these different elements inside, um, we needed to make sure already at this step in the development of the visuals for a level that uh, things are really clearly readable. So another rule was, for example, that um, two hills can never overlap that have the same color. So whenever two hills overlap, they need to have like a different, different color so you can tell them apart nicely. So here's the next step which is basically just putting down some details, some more colors, and then adding some, some shadows and some, you know, playing around with the light a little bit and adding some more details. And that is essentially the final uh, mock-up for the, for the game. That means it's just one image that tells you what that level should look like. The next step was essentially to take all the kind of like all the assets and actually properly paint them and properly like put down all the details and bring those into the game. And um, one more thing, or maybe, yeah, I'm just going to show like three final or finished levels of what they look like in the game, which is like this. So here we have that one of the beginning levels with the hotel. Uh, this is the level following this one where you start at the top and you actually can still see the village in the background and you sort of like move downward and this is the final level in the game. And each level follows an overall progression. Um, this is also one of the things that we did for this game. For the general creative directions, we decided to um, align every element along a, an emotional curve in the game. And this is not necessarily like a new technique or something that we invented. This is, has been successfully done by uh, other studios. Uh, our reference for this is actually uh, that game company who made a game uh, called Flower and Journey. Maybe some of you know. And uh, this is our emotional progression curve. So at the bottom you sort of, you see the, you see the levels and there are only 14. And uh, you, here you have this curve. And like the, the middle horizontal line is sort of like a neutral feeling. And everything on top is, is positive and to the bottom is negative. And what we wanted to do was basically to give an idea of uh, the emotional state of the old man that you play. And in the best case, also have players feel that emotion as they play it. And um, we decided that we wanted to align every single element in the throughout the game to this curve. 
So whenever we built a level, we looked at the curve as a tool and looked at, okay, what is, like, what is the feeling that we want to convey? Uh, where are we going with this level? And uh, we really tried that, to do that with as many um, aspects as possible, be it like the, the, the visuals, be it uh, the audio, the music, but also the level design and the, and the game gameplay itself. So, um, for example, you can see here is like a, in somewhere in the middle, there's like a big drop, right? And um, I think one of the levels, I think it's six maybe, six or seven, I'm not sure. Let's go back one step. It's actually this level right here. And um, it's sort of like it moves from a something like more positive, uh, which is kind of like warmer, brighter colors, to something that is that is a little bit more, uh, what is a little bit more melancholy, maybe, and sadness. So the idea of this level is everything is going down, which is also like you start at the top, and you actually go downwards, 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 and you land in something that is a lot more cold and dark. And the old man actually drowns here, but he survives. Um, and this is, I think, one of the one of the core ideas of um, why Old Man's Journey actually works the way it does is because um, we really took every element and aligned it to that to that emotional curve. And um, yeah, I think this is where I'm pretty much wrapping up. Mm, yeah. I'm out of slides, actually. So I hope this was informative. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them now or come up to me and ask me later. And I should also mention that you can try Old Man's Journey uh, up in the exhibition area on the balcony. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. It's upstairs. OK, yeah. So if you want to give it a shot. So thank you very much. <laughs>
basically there's, there's no real lighting in the game, right? And so it always kind of like popped out as something that didn't belong in there. And at some point we just cut it and replaced it with a 2D asset. So yeah, that's maybe one of the things. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Yes. This, this was an interesting journey that, that you went through. And I'm wondering how long it took to, to get to well, the final art style, I'm guessing it was months, lots yeah. of months. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it took a little bit longer than we expected. It took about five months. We wanted it to take three months, actually, which, um, well, we just kind of like miscalculated in a way was that we had this, this, like, this hotel level basically was our, what we call like a vertical slice. So it's, it's, it's like one piece of the game that is um, uh, as, as finished as possible, but it's just a very small segment of the game. And um, we wanted to put as many, you know, as high production w p values in there as we could get in there. And um, when we had that done, we kind of like thought, okay, this is like our art style. We know, we know how it works now. And then we approached all the other levels and we're kind of like, okay, and what do they need to look like? They all have like different features. They need different elements, what would that mean within like the vocabulary of our art style? How could we process that? And finding that out actually took longer than, than expected, which kind of like in the end ended up delaying the, the overall game. But the overall game took 17 months to develop um, with starting pre-production in November 2015. And we released it in May 2017. Uh, but like coming, like for the whole concept to evolve and for our sort of like the, the, the vision and the constraints that we set up for ourselves that actually happened before that, that almost took a whole year. But it was like always on the side and we tried to, during that time, we kind of like we, we made the concept, we thought about the game design, we pitched the game a lot, which helped a lot sort of like refining the vision for the game. Um, before we actually started on it and also financing the game. Um, so, yeah, hope that answers your question. All right. Thank you, Clemens. You're welcome. Thank you.